So this is the theme or question I'm asking for this talk. Is this too loud? Too? You guys good? Okay, thank you. <laughs> this is the question that I asked for this talk today. And it was actually inspired by a colleague of mine, and he's convinced that I am in the wrong profession. So I'm an entrepreneurship professor here at Chico State, and he is convinced that I am doing something horrible with my life. And he does this by sending me emails of articles, doom and gloom for the university system. If I want to make a difference with entrepreneurs, I need to get out of the university. This is his argument. And he's been doing this for years. And I get these emails every so few weeks or so. Now, I won't share with you his name, but I will show you his picture. <laughs> and I thought that I would share, you, share with you some of the titles of this email that this individual shares with me time and time again. First one, half of US business schools might be gone by 2020. So not only is my career in impending doom, I only have five years left. Another one he shared with me, there's a battle, education versus innovation. Innovation is winning. He is absolutely convinced that universities are not able to produce innovations better than the private sector. So I really need to get out of the university system. Now I'm also a tenure track professor and this colleague of mine also has a sense of humor. So I enjoyed this email. <laughs> he definitely has a sense of humor. But there were so many of these articles and data and evidence that he might actually have a point. He might be right. So I started to look at some of the founders of companies and what their educational backgrounds were. And I actually have quite a list. So as these companies are appearing on the screen, all of them had something in common. They were either founded or co-founded by someone who dropped out of college. So now I'm really worried. My friend might actually have a point. So I thought I would respond today to him by looking into three particular articles that he shared with me. The first of which was the first one that we mentioned, and this one came out by Bloomberg Business. And it was basically attributing these 50% of schools basically going out of business because of online education. Now, online education isn't something new, but there's been a tremendous growth in something called MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. These are courses anyone can take, and there's been a tremendous growth. This has actually been the growth rate. In 2012, we had about 100 MOOCs being offered. Just this past July, there were 2,500 MOOCs being offered. And these are offered by 400 different universities. Now, the completion rate of these MOOCs is 15%. But I can still sign up for these and learn from the best and brightest in the country. In fact, 22 of the 25 top-ranked universities, according to US News, offer these MOOCs for free. Yeah, I was worried too. So we'll look at this other article that looks at some of the costs of education. This is from October 2014. Highly educated, unemployed, and tumbling down the ladder. He sent this to me. And it was an article that talked about individuals who were highly educated, graduate degrees, law degrees, MBAs, you name it. And they found themselves out of a job, and because they paid for these expensive degrees, they were in worse financial condition than their non-highly educated counterparts. At insult to injury, they had a harder time finding jobs because they were overqualified for what was in the market. So yeah, these MOOCs sound like a great idea. They're free. You don't have to engage in the cost. So what is a university's educational advantage in the field of entrepreneurship? I mean, if we look at just the MBA differences in terms of cost, rising cost is now reaching the annual average salary of someone who graduates with an MBA. So of course they're not paying off their student loans anytime soon. 
So there's this last article. Oh, the Young Entrepreneur Council. This is a fabulous organization. They're very selective. It's kind of a mentoring organization where a lot of entrepreneurs get together and help themselves. I actually sent an article back to my friend because this study that they did surveyed their members and found that 92% of their members agreed that the entrepreneurship classes that they took were vital to their success. Aha, point, yes. But there was a bad part to this study. 56% of students between the ages of 20 and 24 in this organization never had access to a single entrepreneurship course. What befuddled me was this last result from this study. 62% of those that did take entrepreneurship courses found them poorly executed. So I come to my last article. Three reasons millennials are ditching an MBA for this. This is actually a recent article that my friend sent me. This was just a few months ago. So what is this? Well, this is accelerators. This is a picture from an accelerator. Accelerators are private companies that take startup teams and try to accelerate their growth and turn them into high growth companies. Why do they do this? Well, they provide them with seed money in exchange for on average six to 10% of equity in the company. So they have a vested interest in seeing these startup teams grow to be highly successful, high growth companies. They give them things like free office space, free web hosting, free design services, employee recruitment services, a team of mentors, a team of coaches. Some of them even get a free travel budget. And at the end of the road, when they've gone through the program, they are able to pitch to actual investors. And the model works pretty well. So those three reasons the article talked about, first one is funding. So I start thinking, well, how would universities be able to possibly be a path not to debt for the rest of your life, but for those that want to start companies, it could be the path to funding. The second reason the article talks about is networks. They get access to mentors, access to coaches, access to investors. What if universities were the place investors came to first? I've been working with student entrepreneurs for over 10 years and I can't tell you how many times I have had the most frustrating conversation with individuals who invest in startup companies. And I share with them some of our student concepts and some of our student um, young companies and they say, I'm sorry Colleen, but these are not market ready. The last reason that the article talks about millennials leaving their MBA and going to accelerators is learning by doing. Now this is a picture of an operating room. Why do I have a picture of an operating room? I always like to compare entrepreneurship education to med school. So you think about a medical student who wants to be a surgeon. We don't expect these medical students to just study theory about surgery. We don't expect these medical students to just come up with a plan for their surgery. Nor do we expect these surgeons to give a pitch on how successful they will be in implementing their plan for surgery. But that's exactly what we expect our entrepreneurship students to do. Wait until you graduate, then test it out. So there's some good news. This organization here, Seed Accelerator Rankings Project, they rank all of the accelerators in the country every year. I was thrilled this year because for the first time ever, an actual university accelerator made the list. Universities are starting to take on this accelerator model. Number four was the University of Chicago. University of Chicago boasts over 100 companies coming out of their accelerator. Over $365 million in funding has been raised by this accelerator at this university. And over $3 billion in mergers and exits. And they're not alone. This is a growing trend. Now, the university accelerators might be a little bit different from their for-profit counterparts, 
Some are semester long, some are a year long, some are just in the summer, and they actually provide student housing on campus while they go through this accelerator program. Some universities are well-funded enough where they don't have to take equity from those companies that go through the program. So I did a little research myself. These are some of the companies that are coming out of university accelerators today. You may recognize some of these names, perhaps not all of them, but I pulled these companies from the portfolios of just four university incubators. And together, they had raised over $680 million in funding for companies that are going through their program. So we're not quite there yet, but I think I've come to an answer to my friend in terms of what universities can provide in terms of a competitive advantage and actually creating companies. So I have a call to professors teaching entrepreneurship or teaching other subjects. Look at some of the models that are working today. Talk to other professors on your campus. Most of these accelerator programs are working because they're cross-campus initiatives with engineers and business students, for example, working together. Maybe just reach out to your professional community and see if there are individuals who want to coach and mentor students who want to start some kind of company. I mean, they don't have to be big things to start what works. It could just be space. And if you don't have space, maybe you reserve a computer lab for a few hours a week just to allow entrepreneurs to get together and work together. Find ways to incorporate it into your curriculum. Something, anything, to provide the resources to our students to actually practice what we preach. Which brings me to students. You are not alone in your responsibilities here. Students, you need to demand more than what is just happening inside the classroom. Ask your professors to introduce you to folks. Bring individuals into your classrooms or go out and see them. More importantly, if there is any kind of entrepreneurship activity happening on your campus, you need to be involved. Because if those numbers are not there, university administration will not hear your call. My last call to action is actually to alumni. Alumni and students, when you graduate, if you want your degree to raise in value, if you want your universities to be true economic engines in your community, you've got to come back and get involved. And it could be as simple as reaching out to your favorite professor and saying, hey, do you have any students that are working on a company that I might be able to mentor, I might be able to coach? Those of you who are alumni that are successful entrepreneurs, how fun would it be to get all of your buddies together and see what kind of funds you could raise to actually launch an accelerator program that could have students building companies before they graduate? Why do we have to wait until our students are grown with mortgages and families and real responsibility to put it all on the line and pursue their dreams? It doesn't make sense. Another problem that I've grappled with is why are so many students dropping out of school to pursue building a company? Entrepreneurship students should never have to make that decision. This kind of model doesn't force them to do it. Now, entrepreneurship is hard. Talk to any entrepreneur, they'll tell you that. Teaching entrepreneurship is also hard but I promise you it can be learned. Thank you.